You will have no problem finding pitchers to adore on Wednesday's slate for MLB DFS because there are half a dozen almost guys in the upper salary range capable of generating upside and getting you a lot of strikeouts. And for a seven-game slate, that's not super normal, but it's a pretty good name list of names here at the top. So our job for today is to sift through those pitchers, decide which ones had the best upside, which ones we trust most based on matchups, talent, et cetera, et cetera, and try to figure out the best way to play things for MLB DFS. Let's dive on in now and get you set for this Wednesday night slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to preview this seven game main slate. We're locked set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Only weather note for this slate is at Wrigley Field, where the wind is actually in from right field at seven miles per hour. That's a slight downgrade to batters for the Reds and the Cubs. I don't think it's enough where you drastically shift your outlook of anything, but at least worth considering that the wind is in at Wrigley. Not super strong at seven miles per hour, but enough to be at least noteworthy for sure, given how wind sensitive that park is. So slight downgrade to bats for the Reds and the Cubs. We'll break down the pitching preview and go through all those studs in just one second. But first... A quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. You name it, we're probably there. While you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review. Our PGA DFS podcast is posted for this week for the John Deere Classic. Speaking of which, the PGA is back in a big way this weekend with a massive daily fantasy contest on FanDuel for the John Deere Classic. This week's PGA Eagle contest includes $100,000 in total prizes with first place netting $20,000. Best of all, it's only $7 to enter to get yourself a chance at all that cash. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Again, Brandon and I broke that down. Uh, our favorite golfers in each salary tier yesterday on the podcast is up on the FanDuel YouTube page, but also on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Sandy Alcantara is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel checking in at $11,000. Alec Manoa is 10-8. Shohei Otani is 10-5. Kyle Wright comes in at $10,400. Nick Pavetta is 10-1. Julio Urias is 96, Hunter Green is 91, with Michael Kopech, Cal Quantrill, and Ranger Suarez as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, there are a lot of good names at the top for today, but I think for the second consecutive week, we can just feel good about loading up on Shohei Otani as our top arm of the night. It's a pretty comforting situation to just be high on Otani, set it, and forget it, because he's just fun to watch. He's at home again, he's facing the White Sox this time, and... They actually have the second worst WRC plus on the slate. It's a 95 versus righties with a 120 ISO. That 120 ISO ranks dead last. They're not a high strikeout team, but I'm not sure much that matters for Otani. For the full season, he has a 33% strikeout rate, 2.67 skill interactive ERA. The White Sox also don't draw many walks, which should beef up Otani's pitch efficiency, which again, he didn't need last week. 13 strikeouts and eight innings. That was against the Royals, who honestly are pretty similar to the White Sox right now, where they're not a great offense, but they don't strike out a ton, but Otani just torched them. He now has double-digit strikeouts four times this year across 12 starts. He is pretty volatile. He has some bad games for sure, but it's not a, you know, a situation where I want to overthink it. I think that if I can get the guy with the best upside, who I also just enjoy rooting for the most... I think that makes it pretty fun. So we will go so through some alternatives. If you don't want to deal with the volatility or want to exploit it from a tournament perspective, you can. But Otani is the top guy for me for cash games, and he will be my top tournament arm of the night as well. I think he's just kind of too good to pass up right now, even with solid alternatives being elsewhere. Number two for me is Kyle Wright. I think both he and Sandy Alcantara have really good cases to be quality pitchers for tonight. But Wright has the better matchup. And that's against the Phillies. This is a spot where looking at their active roster is key because Bryce Harper is gone right now. That is a huge downgrade to this offense. Their active roster without Harper has an 89 WRC plus against righties. That is actually the worst on this slate. Their 148 ISO is tied for second worst. And they will strike out. They got a 23% strikeout right there again without Harper. 
it's a pretty rough scene for the Phillies right now. They could turn it around because they have talented guys who are struggling right now, but I'm fine using pitchers who are facing them until guys like Castellanos start to figure things out. Uh, you know, Reese Hoskins, JT Romo, all those guys. Once they figure things out, cool, I'll, I'll deviate. But for right now, kind of okay with going here. And Wright is good enough to take advantage of a good matchup. He's been leaning more on his changeup across his past seven starts, which is a really good pitch for him. It has a 255 X Woba against it per baseball savant. And using that pitch has allowed him to, to generally pitch really well. He has a 3.56 ERA, a 3.50 skill interactive ERA with a 25% fly ball rate, and a 24% strikeout rate. That strikeout number is not huge, but he's had seven plus strikeouts three times in this span. And in this matchup, I'm in. I have right projected for six strikeouts here, which is a totally fine number for this kind of matchup. We can expect him to probably not let up too many earned runs. I'll be on right here for sure because of the advantages working in his favor. All the value plays are kind of bad. We got a lot of studs, so I personally don't feel the need to do a value. I don't think I will personally, but I do want to stack the Dodgers again today. I'm sorry. Withhold your moans, please. I get it. I understand. I'm there with you, but I kind of want to do it again. Uh, but I should at least talk about a value play if you want to load up on Trey Turner and guys like that. The top value for me would be Justin Steele at $7,600. Steele's facing the Reds, and they're actually hitting pretty well against lefties with a 117 WRC+. plus. So it's not about the matchup. It's just that Steele's pitching okay overall. Not a big strikeout guy, 21% strikeout rate for the year, but really good batted ball data for Steele. He has a 34% hard hit rate with a 27% fly ball rate. It hasn't made him bulletproof. His ERA is 4.59, and part of the reason that number is high because he is because he let up seven earned runs to this very same offense back on May 26th. So that's why I'm not super into it. You know, I don't really want to go down here, but... He can have pretty good starts. Steele's gone seven innings twice in his past four starts. He had eight strikeouts last time out. That's his third time getting eight plus strikeouts this year. So there is at least a path to Steele pitching well. It might not be the most likely path, and that's why I'll be living the upper tier, but I've got Steele projected for five strikeouts. It's not bad for a guy at $7,600. I most likely, in full transparency, will not use him myself. But if you want a value play, He's probably your top guy. I think to me, this slate is get a stud pitcher and find value hitters than stacks you like and build around them because I just think that they're, that's a better route for today than trying to scrounge for a value pitcher. I just think the 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 high salary guy is very worth it. The low salary guys are generally low salary for a reason. So that's where I'm at with pitching for today with Otani 1, right 2. We'll talk about Sandy Alcantara, number 3 in things to watch. First, so let's talk about some stacks here and go back to the Dodgers. They're still at Coors Field. I wish they'd leave. It's uh, it's really annoying to have them there. So please get them out of Coors Field. I'm sick of this, but I got to do it. It's just I, I can't I can't stop. They're facing Herman Marquez, and I like Marquez a lot. I think he's better than what his results say, but I don't think that even if we account for that, he's pitching well enough for us to avoid him at Coors Field. I will stack the Dodgers again here. Marquez made a pretty key shift halfway through this year where seven starts ago, he jacked up his sinker usage in a pretty significant fashion. He lowered the usage on his four-seam fastball, and it has helped a bit. He's getting a bit more weak contact now. The strikeout rate is up a tad from where it was too, but it's not enough to help his results because in this time with more sinkers, his ERA is 7.06. In his three home starts, he's let up four, six, and four earned runs. And that hasn't been against elite teams. The Dodgers, I don't think they've totally collapsed. I wouldn't put them in the elite team tier right now either, but I don't think they've totally collapsed. Now, Marquez did have a great outing last week. He went uh, seven and two-thirds innings against the Twins. No runs there. But that was in Minnesota. Byron Buxton was not playing for that game, or he didn't start at least. And Marquez in that game had just two strikeouts with five walks. So... I don't view that as being a start that shifts the way I view Marquez. I think we can still definitely stack against him at Coors Field, which is what I want to do for tonight. So the Dodgers, I'm sorry, are the top stack once again for today. Marquez's platoon splits are almost dead even. 50% ground ball rate versus righties, 50% against lefties. 
the strikeout rates separated by just one percentage point. So I said, just pick the guys you like most based on the numbers against righties. I will say there are a pretty good number of lower salary guys on this Dodgers team, right around 3000. So whether you're going to Otani, Wright, Manoa, Alcantara, I think you can stack the Dodgers. You may just have to settle for the second tier guys instead of Will Smith, Freddie Freeman, Trey Turner, stuff like that. I think that you can make it work as long as you're okay uh, conceding a bit in terms of the value or the quality of the guys you're using within that stack. The second stack is the Cubs. I do downgrade them a bit due to the win being in a Wrigley field, but they're facing Hunter Green. We know this is a volatile situation and he's doing some really good stuff, but the way he operates can lead to dingers in a hurry, which I think necessitates our continuing to stack against him in tournaments. And we talked about this entering last week where he had a skill interactive ERA around 3.70, Green did, in his previous eight starts. That happened because he was throwing fewer fastballs. And that's a good shift for him because his fastball is not working right now. He did still struggle there, though. He let up six earned runs and three homers in five innings. He has let up four plus earned runs in four of his nine starts since he started to scale back the fastball. It is a good shift for Green. It has made him a better pitcher, and he is more likely to have good games now than he was before. But the upside that was there previously is still there. We can live with the risks when there is multi homer upside kind of up and down the lineup. The Cubs are not some massive power team, but they're also not terrible. They have a 106 WRC plus against righties in their current active roster. That's why they're not higher on this list because they're not a big homer team. That's why, you know, I'm okay dinging them for the weather as well, but I still think it's a good spot for home runs. Uh, and I like hunt for dingers. The Cubs give me that here. So the Cubs, a good option for today. We've talked about this a couple of times now, but Green struggles more with righties and lefties. He becomes a two-pitch pitcher when he's facing the righties. So I'd bump up righties quite a bit here. Christopher Morell is $2,900. He has a 185 ISO against righties. A lot of strikeouts for him recently, which is a bit concerning, but does hit the ball pretty hard. Patrick Wisdom has a 228 ISO versus righties. I'd start with those key righties, Morell, Wisdom, and kind of build from there. William Contreras, uh, Wilson Contreras, I should say. I'm getting mixed up. Wilson Contreras, not as big of a power guy against righties. I would still use him a lot, uh, but that's why I rank him below Morell and Wisdom is because not as much pop there, but he's probably still third on the list either way. For the third stack, it's a, a tournament only one for me. That's the Angels. And the reason they are tournaments only is because it's not safe. They're facing Michael Kopech, who's had good results most of this year, but I still think we should give the Angels a look here in tournaments. The most relevant sample on Kopech is his past eight starts. He's using more sliders in that time, with, and he's got a 3.4 OER, all right? That's pretty good. Good results. But there are some issues in the peripherals. Specifically, he's walking a lot of guys. He's let up a 51% fly ball rate, which leads to a 4.74 skill interactive ERA. Among all the pitchers on this slate and their most relevant samples, that's actually the worst number of any pitcher for tonight. It has bit Kopech a couple times. He let up four runs to the Astros, let up three to the Orioles, five to the Blue Jays, three to the Yankees. And the Angels are a pretty solid offense. They have a 117 WRC plus against righties with a 201 ISO. I think they could get to him here. So again, it is risky given how good the results have been for Kopech, but I do think there's upside here. It, you know, I think that um, I'm willing to give it a shot for sure. So I'll give it a spin here. It's risky, but I think that it's not, it's not, it's being different without being stupid. I think it's the way that I'd phrase it here. I don't think there are a ton of like surefire stacks for tonight. So I'm okay going with, with a low floor. And I think the angels are that, but they come with a good ceiling. So I will use them here tonight. I do want to talk about the Otani part of this stack because Having him as a pitcher means we can't include him in our stacks or tonight. And that's a bummer because I'd like to use it. But he is still actually in there in a way. We, I mean, he's in the lineup. That's that's a good thing, which means we still benefit from his presence in this in this order. Every hit Otani gets increases run scoring and RBI chances for the teammates that we're using in our stacks. It jacks up their projected plate appearances. It, there are a lot of benefits to Otani being in there. It's not like he's out. He's still in the lineup, so we're still benefiting from him, even if we can't use him specifically within our lineups. 
So no, you can't use him, and that sucks because it's one less high upside guy to use on this team, but you are still benefiting from his being there. And I think that makes the Angels a fun stack even when he's pitching. So, you know, it's not ideal, but I think that despite that, it's still a stack I feel really good about personally. Things to watch. Let's talk about Sandy Alcantara. I would definitely rank him third for tonight, even considering salary at $11,000. And I think you can stack him or use him while stacking the Dodgers. Uh, you got the Angels and the Cubs with some value plays there. Max Stassi's 22, Jared Walsh 28. We talked about Morell, talked about Wisdom. All these guys come with low salaries. And you've got Max Muncy, Chris Taylor, Cody Bellinger, Gavin Lux, all pretty much bargain salaries compared to Coors. So I think we can make it work. I'll be doing that. You know, it's not going to be super comfortable to stack the Dodgers while glossing over Freeman, Turner, et cetera, et cetera, in a lot of lineups, but I think it's fine. So I will try to make that work. Alcantara just going super deep in games net right now, mowing everyone down. Low strikeout matchup, which is why he was not in my top two, but do still like him quite a bit and we'll rank him number three. I'm not opposed to some Blue Jays lineups and tournaments. They're facing Nick Pavetta, who's pitching really well right now, but he's still letting up a 44% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate. We're not going to get the Jays at a roster rate discount because their implied total is pretty high, but they do have upside. I'm totally fine considering them here and will go towards the Jays for sure. Just uh, keep in mind that they're not going to be sneaky and Pavetta is pretty good as well. Finally, I could be okay with the Twins. They're facing Cal Quantrill, who... Not a bad pitcher by any means, but he does let up a lot of balls in play, which is kind of what we want for stacking. They're not a great stack, but they are an option. Uh, I would specifically lean on the lefties here if you're going to go here for one-offs. Um, Jorge Polanco came back last night and hit a home run. His, I think his second plate appearance back, so he's he's on the menu once again. All those outfielders who, who are lefties. I think all these guys work. So I would go towards the lefties. Quantrill lets up a lot more hard contact to them. Twins not a great option, but one I would consider if you need some more bats. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for tonight. Going to Coors Field for the first one, despite the fact that Marquez does get a good number of ground balls. I will go Will Smith. Uh, Smith is a really fun batter. Uh, he was out last night, which means he should be back in there for today. A lot of fly balls, good amount of hard contact. I considered Max Muncy here, but he went deep last night. Not as fun. So we'll go to Will Smith as the boring home run call. For the fun one, I think you could push back on this being fun just because I think he's a really good batter. But hey, I mean, his salary is $2,800. So Jared Walsh, um, I think that in this situation versus Kopech, a guy who lets up a lot of fly balls, I know Walsh has 13 home runs or whatever so far this year, but you know, I think it's fun because his salary is low, probably not going to have the shortest uh, home run odds for tonight. So we'll go with Will Smith and Jared Walsh as our dinger calls for today. That's all we got here for the slate here on this Wednesday night. Again, I think that uh, pretty good slate for pitching. I have it ranked Otani followed by Wright, followed by Alcantara. But if you love Alec Manoa, sweet. No pushback. I think you can make uh, that case for sure. It's a good slate for pitching and not hard to find guys to like for tonight. Uh, a reminder again, our PGA podcast for the John Deere Classic is posted with myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down the field. It's a wonky field, but the cash is still the same in DFS uh, tournaments. So, you know, uh, do the research to find out which guys we like. I think that there are advantages for people who pay attention on slates like this. So I would check that out for sure on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you. The MLB DFS lineups will talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.